Hi, this is Hugh for Tone Twins TV. It's another lockdown video, but this one's got a twist. Uh, I'm going to be starting it off and Ed's going to be finishing it. It's DIY time again. And what we're going to be doing is building one of these. You're probably looking at it and thinking, well, that's the ugliest effects battle I've ever seen in my life. But it's actually a speaker switch box. It's an incredibly useful little device because you can mount one of these into the back of any combo amplifier and you can use the internal speaker or at the flick of a switch, you can connect that amplifier to an external speaker. So if you want to know what your Princeton Reverb or Vox AC10 or 15 or your Champ sounds like through a 1x12 or a 2x12, 2x10, 4x12 even, uh, this is the little box that will enable you to do it. It's super simple to make, so let's see how it's done. Well, there aren't a great number of components in this little project, really. I've got two mono jacks. I've got a switching mono jack. I've got a switch to toggle between internal and external. I've got a, an 8 ohm resistor here, which is basically going to be my safety resistor. And I'm going to use the switching jack uh, I'm going to configure it so when it's unplugged, it actually connects to this resistor. And that means if the amp is ever switched on and this switch is in the external position, it's not going to fry the amplifier because the amplifier will be seeing the expected load. Uh, this connects, well, mounts on the box itself with a couple of rivets. There's a box I've actually drilled. So these are the rivet holes. Three holes for the jack sockets and this hole here on the end is for the switch. I've actually made one up already. So there you go, mono jack, mono jack, switching mono jack, and there's our switch there. So anyway, let's put all this together. I'll show you how the hardware mounts up. I uh, got this Music Nomad uh, multi-tool a little while back, which I find incredibly useful for doing uh, this kind of work. One of my favorite features is that it's got a little spanner on the end. It's compatible with a whole bunch of different nut sizes that are commonly found on amplifier and guitar components. One. Okay, there's one in there. I'm going to do these jack sockets first. So, this is the switching jack socket. This is a regular mono jack socket you could probably get away with cheaper style components really but uh, just something like this there's so few of them and I just like to use high quality connectors and switches if I can for safety and reliability as much as anything else okay let's get this uh, let's get this resistor in need my riveting tool for this. Okay. Okay, so there's the rivets. And this is firmly and securely mounted on there. The switch will be a little bit of a tight fit now because resistor's already been added, but uh, no big deal. And go. Okay. Everything mounted up. So all I've got to do now is, uh, is do the hookup wiring and that should be fairly simple. Okay, it's time to get wiring. So I'm gonna hook up this resistor first. Got some fairly heavy duty cloth cable. 
Okay, so this is going to be our ground connection. So it's going to go onto this tag here on the switching jack. This cloth wire is kind of easy to work with because it's uh, it pushes back to expose the wire, and this is pre-tinned, which makes life a lot easier. Okay, that's our only ground wire, so I'm just gonna make that one black. And the other connection I'll do with white. Always try and ensure that you don't actually move the wire after it's been soldered until the solder is well and truly set. Good strong connection on that. And that's our safety resistor. Properly hooked up. Okay, let's get the rest of this done. So the input connection, the tip of that one is basically going to come to the center tag of the switch. So let's get that done now. Okay, so this is where it becomes a little bit counterintuitive. Well, the wiring becomes counterintuitive because I want the box to be intuitive to use. So basically, if it's mounted upright in the amplifier, I want this connection here to be the internal speaker. So logically, you'd want the switch to be pointing towards the internal speaker. And then if this is for the external speaker to activate that connection, you'd want the switch to go in the opposite direction. But basically because of the way switches work, the external connection is going to be this tag and the internal connection is going to be this tag. It's a little bit counterintuitive, but uh, it'll work in the end. So the next thing I want to do is connect the tip of the internal speaker jack to this one here. Okay, now I want to take the tip of the external jack connection to this tag here on the switch. As you can see, all the connections are made and I'll verify the circuit is working before I actually install it into the amp. You may notice that I've, the only ground connection that I've made is the connection to the safety resistor. But because I've used a metal chassis, using my continuity setting on my meter again, I can verify that all of these are actually connected to ground via the enclosure itself. If you're using a plastic enclosure or you're using insulated jacks then you will actually need to make those ground connections. Just hook them all up and daisy chain them together, no problem at all. But okay I've got a couple of uh, mono jack to jack patch cables here so I just want to verify that the circuit is working. So at the moment it's set to internal. So if I connect from the tip of this connection, of the input connection, that works. If I switch it to external, it should stop working. Okay, so far so good. 
Let's have a look at the external connection. So it's switched to external and if I touch the input jack here, we're good. Yeah, that works. Okay, now then, still switch to external. And what I'm going to do is set my multimeter to its lowest setting, which is 200 ohms. And what I want to do is verify what impedance I'm getting on this input jack with this box switch to external. So if I touch the chassis with one side, I'm getting four ohms, which is the value of this safety resistor. So I'm very happy with that. The box is working. Better build the other one now. Okay, so I'm going to be installing this into the back of a really cool old Wem Watkins Custom 15. And I've basically drilled some holes into the, well, through the enclosure here. So I put some screws through and actually screw it down. If you would prefer not to put screws into your cabinet to mount one of these, you can actually use some Velcro. The stuff that's sold for pedal boards is absolutely ideal. But Hot Rocks do a super, super strong one. That is absolutely superb for this type of thing, but because the inside of the cabinet is black and if I ever fill the holes, I can just put some black paint over it and it'll be no problem at all. Totally invisible. Okay, so that's really tight on there. Right, so that's the output jack there for the uh, for the external speaker. I've wired up a female jack, jack socket here. Um, basically there's a um, an 8 ohm tap on this transformer so the internal speaker could be disconnected and this could be run into something like a 8 ohm Celestium Blue. I'm just going to leave that loose inside the cabinet. This is the connection for the speaker. And this is the hardwired output of the amplifier straight from the transformer. That connects in there like that. Cover goes on. And I'll just screw it down. I've also written down 16 ohms here, which corresponds to the safety resistor that I've installed inside. So anyway, let's get the, uh, the back panels on and we're done with this. So as you can see, this is a really simple little project, only a handful of components, very easy to wire up and very, very affordable and no scary voltages. So I'm going to hand you over to Ed now and he's going to show you how it works and how it can greatly expand the range of tones you can get from any amplifier. Thanks Hugh. Okay, so I'll record some quick guitar clips for you, um, hopefully showcasing a wide range of tones using the guitar's volume knob. Um, the guitar I'll use today is a Novo Ceres J with some P90 pickups. All the speakers are mic'd up using the same Bayer M160 ribbon mic. Uh, the first speaker you'll hear will be the ELAC 10-inch Alnico uh, that comes in the amp as standard. Second, you'll hear a rather mighty 4x12 uh, greenback loaded car with some pre-roller 20 watt greenbacks in it. And finally, you'll hear a Taden Ace 25, very much a Celestium Blue clone, in the Tweed Lazy J extension cab. Hopefully this will showcase the range of tones that a small speaker box like this uh, will help you achieve with an amp. 
It's worth noting that the box itself isn't a impedance matcher, so make sure your cab matches the impedance your amp wants to see. Otherwise, use a device such as the Weber speaker matching impedance transformer um, to make sure things run smoothly. Hope you enjoy. Hope you enjoyed those short clips just showcasing the sheer range of tones you can achieve with changing speakers and your amp. We find these most useful where amps have the speakers hardwired to the output transformer, uh, such as many old British amps like Vox AC30s and WEMs like the model you've seen today. See you soon for another Tone Twins video. Diolch an fawr.